Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I'm working on this 5500 watt storm responder generator. This one, I actually didn't buy. It belongs to a subscriber who thought he got a good deal on it. He purchased it with the intention of sending it to his extended family in West Africa to power a school. Now, he didn't try starting it when he bought it. You know, he was told it had low hours on it and should run. But when he later went to test it, he tried pulling the engine over. And the engine did rotate, I'm told, a bit. But then it got stuck. So hopefully it's not terminal. You know, I don't see a hole in the side of the block. Usually when they blow, they punch a hole right here. So I'd give this one hope. You know, potentially it's hydrolocked or just has maybe a little bit of rust in there. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. But before I do anything, I'm gonna check the oil. These have a bad habit of running out of oil and there's no oil sensor to shut it down. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see any oil in there. So yeah, that's not a good sign. You know, hopefully the subscriber drained it out, maybe, before transporting it. I'm not sure, but definitely not a good sign. I'm just going to get that plug out, take a look down in the cylinder. That is tight. Wow. I can't get that plug out. Hmm. That's not a good sign. Feel like that plug's gonna break. Uh, I might use the impact on that. I don't like doing that. But I think it's gonna break otherwise. <laughs> oh boy. Couldn't loosen this by hand or with the small impact. I had to use the biggest one I have set to the highest setting, which is close to 300 foot pounds. So, not giving these threads much of a chance here. That's not a good sign. The plug, it is covered in rust. So somehow water got in the cylinder causing this damage. And that's why the plug was so hard to get out. Uh, but I don't see any aluminum 
on here. So I think it left the threads behind. So maybe the head isn't trashed. I'm not sure, but thankfully this does not have a cast iron sleeve. It's aluminum bore, aluminum piston. So the only thing that can rust and keep the engine from rotating are the rings uh, or the valves. The valves could be rusted in place as well. So let me get the boroscope out. I'll take a look down in the spark plug hole, see what we see and go from there. All right, let's take a look. And there's not too much to see here. The piston, it's right at the top of its travel. No pieces or chunks of metal. So I guess that isn't a bad thing, but there's really not much more I can tell here. So I'm gonna put some PB Blaster in there. And while that's soaking, I'm gonna get the valve cover off, make sure the valves aren't stuck. There's just four bolts to get the valve cover off, but you gotta get this off first, this shield. And this, a lot of people don't realize what this does. And if this is going to Africa, definitely wanna take this off because the purpose of it is to catch hot air coming off the head and recirculate it back into the intake. It prevents ice buildup when the temperatures are cold outside. But yeah, any kind of weather above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, that is not doing you any favors because the engine's gonna run hotter and it's gonna burn oil at a faster rate. And this does not have an oil sensor. So you don't wanna run with this on unless it's pretty cold outside. Uh, <laughs> problem. So the pusher rod's bent. Most likely the valve is stuck. And even the intake valve, it's very loose. So yeah, that's kind of odd. Let's see if the valve opens. Intake valve opens. And the exhaust valve does not open. So that is why this is bent, I'm sure. It was probably pulled over. And yeah, if the valve's not gonna open, something has to give. So most likely it is rusted. And even if I free it up, chances are it's not gonna make a good seal, but I think we should at least try, although that doesn't explain why the engine doesn't turn over. If the valve is stuck shut, the engine should still rotate over. So yeah, let's, let's solve that issue first before trying to free that valve. I'm gonna pull off the stator cover. It's a lot faster just to do that and gain access to the rotor bolt and use that to rotate the engine to hopefully free it up. That power head looks very clean. No corrosion. I usually see rust, spider webs, all sorts of stuff, but this one looks pretty good. I'm gonna turn the engine backwards. And you can see it's not stuck when going backwards. But now it is. Let's try it the other way. Yep, 
Yeah, it's stuck and it's a hard stop. So I don't think it's rust on the piston either. The connecting rod is broken and it's just making contact with the crankshaft and stopping the rotation of the engine or there's a valve stuck open, which they looked like they were closed. So yeah, let's take a look at the piston while I rotate the engine, see if it's moving. Okay, well, the piston's moving. So that's good. So I'd say the engine is good. It might be an issue with the valves. But the valves, they look closed. So I'm surprised it can't get past top dead center, unless there's just a ridge. So I'm gonna put a little bit more PB Blaster in there. Just do that a few more times and make sure that nothing's gonna free up. Yeah, I'm gonna get that off and just tap the valve, see if I can break it free. Yeah, and you can see the valves, they're both at the same level. So it tells me that the piston can't be hitting the valve, but the valve is stuck. So I'll tap that, see if we can get it to move. There's a good chance the keepers could pop out while doing this, but you know, either it frees up and works or the head has to come apart anyway. Okay. It's not moving and we have another problem. So yeah, I think the head has to come off. You know, I was going to take a look to see if maybe it was getting stuck on the ignition coil, preventing the engine from turning over. But regardless, there's a stuck valve. I'm sure it's rusted in there pretty good and that has to be dealt with. So yeah, let's get the tank out of the way. We'll get the exhaust, the carburetor, and this tin off, and then get the head pulled off. God. Got a bad feeling about this one. A lot of rust. So, yeah, maybe, maybe this was underwater. I'm not sure.
and it's not looking too good. That is all that white powder, that's all aluminum oxide. And you can just see the valve stem right there with some rust on it. So yeah, this head, it is not looking too good. Uh, luckily, I do have a couple extra. So assuming the piston can go up and down, once this head is removed, we have a chance of getting this thing running again. Okay, well, this stuff right here might have been the reason why I couldn't make it past top dead center. So let's soak up the PB blaster and the WD-40. And rotate the engine. Yeah, it's still not making it past. Let's get rid of the head gasket. There we go. So yeah, I think this one can be saved. I don't hear any strange noises from the bottom end. And the piston goes up and down. The cylinder too actually looks very good. I don't see any scratches on it somehow. So... I think all I need to do is probably get this to top dead center, clean the piston, clean the old gasket material off, and we should be able to put this back together with a new used head that actually works. And I guess I should show you the head since we're talking about it. There's no saving this one. There's severe rust on the intake valve, which is actually the one that moves, and it's the exhaust that's stuck. So, yeah, there was definitely water in this engine, whether it was just confined to the top end or it got into the bottom as well, I don't know. But the bottom end, at least it rotates. We won't really know until it's running how it sounds, but I think it will run again.
So close. I thought for sure I had an extra head gasket hanging around for this engine, but I don't. So I need to place an order and get a head gasket to put this together. But I do have everything else. This head here, it is used, but it has a good spark plug. It's previously been cleaned and lapped. So it's ready to be installed. You know, I have two good straight push rods and gaskets for the exhaust in the intake. So that's just about everything that we need. So I'm going to place an order, get that head gasket so I can finish putting this thing together. But for now, I do want to pull the drain on the crankcase. I want to see if there's any oil in there at all and drain out whatever's in there and get some good fresh oil in there now before I get this put back together. Because once it's together, I get a little bit anxious and I want to hear the engine run and I don't want to do something stupid like start it without oil. Not much. So I'm not sure how this engine didn't blow up, but at least there's no water in the crankcase. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that generator was not underwater. I think most likely the water came from the fuel and the ethanol. So that said, it would have had to come through the carburetor through a leaky needle and into the cylinder and also out the intake, which is why that was all rusted. So let's get this open and see what it looks like inside. Now, this bowl is just held on by a couple of what I believe are JIS screws and they're nearly impossible to get out. So I'm just going to skip ahead and use the impact to crack those loose. And that fuel that just spilled out smells pretty bad. Actually looks pretty clean. The fuel though, don't see any water. It does smell like varnish, but this is surprisingly clean. And it looks like it is an OEM Nikki carb, which is good because the clone carbs for this engine, they do not, they do not work well. They run the engine rich. Yeah, it actually looks pretty respectable in here. That's pretty much it. It's really not much to these carbs. The main jet is in the center here. Usually you can push it out like that. And these are pickups as well. So you want to make sure those are clear and these ones are. So yeah, kind of surprising. Thought it was going to be a lot worse.
I might have been wrong about where the water came from. You know, I would expect the bowl to have some water in it, but it did not. Main jet is not clogged. Cleaned up pretty well. Not that it was bad to begin with, but there was some junk here by the choke and that is all gone and everything else is pretty much ready to go. So let's get this back together. This main jet, the smaller diameter end goes down. Then make sure it goes all the way down. See, it's not all the way down, but I think it is now. And I'm going to reuse the OEM gasket. I do have some kits that are clone kits. And I recently tried one. It worked great for about a day. And then this gasket swelled up and it didn't work anymore. So if you're gonna rebuild one of these, don't use clone parts because it will not run very well. And usually I test the function of the needle and seat before I put it together. But with this carb style, you can't do that until you put the bowl on and tighten it down. The new head gasket showed up today, so I'm just going to degrease the mating surfaces. We'll get this installed, the head torqued down, and get this thing back together. Just get a little bit of oil in the top end. All the head bolts, they are the same length, but one of them is a different color. That one goes on the top left, 
closest to the exhaust. This should be torqued to about 220 inch pounds. I'm going to bring it up halfway and then finish it off. Okay, perfect. Now, I don't feel any compression, but both valves are tight. So let's set the valves. It's five thousandths on each, plus or minus a thousandth. So I'm gonna rotate the engine until the exhaust is open like it is now. We'll set the intake and then we'll do the exhaust. Rotate the engine until the intake's open. And yeah, exhaust is tight. Yeah, good compression now. So I think, I think I'm gonna get the valve cover on, we'll get the exhaust and the starter recoil on. I do wanna do a compression test on this. With a compression release, it should have about 60 PSI if the valves are adjusted properly. Just get a little oil on the top end, it's pretty dry.
So what do you think? I think it's going to be 60, if not a little bit above, because when pulling the engine over, it feels pretty good. So I would say 60, if not maybe closer to 65. Not bad. We're at 70 PSI. So, yeah, this should run. So I'm going to get the carburetor back on, get the airbox back on, maybe feed it a little bit of fuel, and see if it makes power. Gonna swap out the airbox. This one is a lot cleaner and fairly rust free. Uh, the other one, it can be cleaned up with a wire wheel and some evapor rust, but I haven't done it yet. And I've got this one ready to go. So we'll go with this one. It's a little bit too late to test this outside, so I'm going to do a quick test right here. Just put a little bit of fuel in the carburetor. I want to get it started, see how the engine sounds, see how the carburetor is running the engine, and of course see if this thing makes any power.
can't really complain about that. It started right up. The engine sounds good. The carburetor is running it well. And of course we have power. So there's really nothing more to do other than get that tank on, get it outside and do some load testing. Make sure it can pull a 5,500 watt load. But before I can do that, the fuel tank does need a little bit of work. It is missing the fuel valve. It's supposed to be right there. So we'll get that installed, get the tank on and bring it outside. It's a little hard to show you, but this might be an issue. The tank, it's a little damaged where the bushing goes and potentially it may not make a good seal. I'm not sure. I hope it does because I don't have any other tanks like this. So let's install the valve, put a little fuel in there and see if it's going to hold. This can be a little bit tricky, but the way you're supposed to do it is just put the new bushing in first. And once that's in, you need a little bit of oil, both on the inner diameter here as well as right here. And then you just push it in. There we go. So far, so good. So I'm gonna let this sit overnight and hopefully it looks like this in the morning. Made it through the night without any leaks. So I think we're ready to give this thing a try. Just gotta put the fuel line back on. The one that came with this has a filter on it, but we don't need that because there's one on the valve that we put on the tank. Plus, I think this is a paper filter, which you don't wanna use because once they get a little bit clogged up, the pressure on the gravity fed system. It's not enough to push the fuel through. You really need a screen type filter, but in this case, we'll just eliminate this, run a straight fuel line to the carb and run it like that.
let's get this thing fired up. I want to warm the engine up a bit and then we'll put it under load, see how it does. I'm going to bring it up to 5,000 watts. That'll be a balanced load of 2,500 watts on each leg. And then I'm going to bump up the load a bit to 5,500 watts, which will be unbalanced and overloading one of the legs just a bit. So I'm expecting the circuit breaker to trip, but if it keeps running, I'll bring it up to 6,000 watts and see if it can hang on. Okay, good. The engine, it is running well. I was a little concerned with the engine speed because without a load, it started just below 61 hertz. So I didn't know how well it was gonna maintain its speed, but even under a overload condition of 6,000 watts, it held just fine, just below 59 hertz. So the engine's doing fine. It doesn't need any adjustments, but the voltage, it's low. It's passable but it's definitely on the low side. And this has an AVR, so I do want to bring the voltage up. And in this case, the country that it's going to, the voltage is actually 140 volts on their grid. So I'm going to aim a little bit higher than normal, probably bring it up to about 125 volts. You know, I think that'll be fine. So let's make that adjustment and try it again. I'm going to start just by turning it in two full turns clockwise. All right, let's get this thing started. I actually turned it in a few more turns, so a total of five turns. Usually what I see is one turn will bring it up about two volts. And in this case, I'm aiming to bring it up 10 volts. So let's get it started and see where it's at.
okay and that was perfect just over 126 volts so we can get this power head closed up Well guys, that's pretty much it. I mean, this one turned out well, but it easily could have gone the other way. The person that bought this generator, he bought what he thought was a good running machine and he paid the price for a good running machine. And yeah, this was far from it. Luckily I had the part it needed and the engine wasn't trashed. And in the end, you know, things worked out okay, but yeah, fixing something like this, like bringing it to a small engine shop, would not have been practical because the part alone is about $300 for a new head, not to mention the labor, which would have exceeded the value of this generator. But, you know, in my case, he managed to find me. I had all the parts needed, and I'm donating my time for this one. It is for a good cause, and hopefully that school can put it to good use. So... I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.